Hello and welcome to How Accurate Are Pulse Oximeters on Different Body Parts. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. A couple things to keep in mind when we talk about pulse oximetry. First of all, pulse oximetry is peripheral. So in this picture, as you can see here, we have the pulse oximeter on a finger, okay, a peripheral sight. It relies on red light, which is really a very low wavelength light. So it can be interfered with by a lot of other types of lights, like the lights in the room. Reads everything that's bound to hemoglobin and our SpO2, that's what you're getting from your pulse ox, is different than your SaO2, which is what you get from your blood gas. So the SAO2 is an actual measurement of oxygen saturation in the blood. So we take a blood test, not in a tube like this, but we take a blood test and we are measuring the amount of oxygen in the tube, and this is done in your blood gas, versus our SpO2, which is a secondary type of a measure, since we are measuring the amount of oxygen that is reflected off of the red blood cells in the blood and its peripheral. So now, let's take a look at some different types of sensors. Here is a finger sensor down on the bottom left, and then here is a, an adjustable foot sensor for infants on the right at the bottom. Now, because these things are made the way that they are, it looks like you can use them in a lot of different ways. Put it on a finger, put it on a nose, put it on an ear, put it on a forehead. I mean, we put them all over the place, right? So now these two types of sensors are made for very specific uses, like the finger, like the foot. Okay, so they're made for very specific uses. When we use them on body parts that they are not designed for, or in different parts of the anatomy that they weren't designed for, so maybe even the finger probe is on the finger, but we've applied it in a different way, not over the tip like this one was, but maybe we applied it around the finger or something like that. When we start doing that and start using them in ways that are not accepted or not what they're designed for, we can end up by having some altered perception of our SpO2. So here's some other types of sensors. These are specific to the earlobe, specific to the forehead. So these are specific types of sensors for these. We don't all have these. So sometimes we'll say, hey, let's try the earlobe and let's use one of our other types of probes and let's just apply it to the ear to be able to get a pulse ox. When we use the pulse ox, on anyone, whether it's in the right place or not in the right place, it tends to overestimate the SAO2. So that's the oxygen saturation we see in our blood gas. However, when we put them in an off-label placement, so those are placements that they're not designed for, it causes even further distortion of that SAO2. So we may be seeing that the SpO2, our pulse ox is saying, yeah, this patient's got a oxygen saturation of 94%, when in fact it's 88%. So it tends to overestimate the amount of the um, oxygen that's in the blood. The overestimation was increased as the patient's SAO2 decreased. So as that patient's SAO2 starts to go down, our overestimation becomes even larger. And so we may think the patient's doing really great, when in fact they're really not. So the key here is to keep in mind that pulse oximetry is a monitoring tool. It's not a diagnostic tool. If we think that our patient may be hypoxic, we need to get a blood gas. We can't use the, the pulse ox as our only tool to be able to assess whether or not the patient has hypoxemia. This is the reference. If you'd like to find out more about the study that was done, looking at off-label placement of pulse oximetry sensors in comparison to the on-label placement in Dimensions of Critical Care Nursing. So the recommendations are, let's improve the technology to ensure the accuracy. Let's educate our providers and our consumers so that they understand that so many of these things are being used at home now. And then these are standards from the Society of Critical Care Medicine, the American Association of Critical Care, American Associ uh, College of Chest Physicians, and the American Thoracic Society. Thank you for joining me for How Accurate Are Pulse Oximeters on Different Body Parts. My name is David Woodruff. Until next time, bye now.